Hello everybody, this is Haley from the Lowell Public Library. Today our teen program is going to be diamond painting, or 5D painting. I'm going to break down this video into three parts. First will be a brief history of diamond painting and some interesting facts that I've learned along the way. The second part of the video will be a how to do a diamond painting with, again, some tips and tricks. Followed by the last part, there will be how to finish your diamond painting as well as a special surprise. So stay tuned to see what that special surprise is. Let's go ahead and get started with part one. All right, so part one, the history and a little bit of explaining behind diamond painting. Diamond painting, which is also referred to as 5D painting, was created in 2015. It's a mix between cross stitching and paint by number. They are typically made from an adhesive canvas base that you attach the diamond drills to, but they also can come in journals, bookmarks, lights, pillows, and many other varieties of material. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to go ahead and focus on the canvas diamond paintings. So there are two types of diamonds that are most commonly used in diamond paintings. The first one are these kind, which are round, and they'll be the kind that we're going to be using later on in the video. These ones are just little circles that will fit in next to each other with a little bit of space between them, where this one was done in squares, so you can see that there is little to no space between each of the diamonds. Now, there is little to no difference between the two of them. Most diamond paintings will come in round ones, specialty ordered ones, or certain ones will come in squared diamonds. There's not really a difference between them. You can use both of them simultaneously. Also, some ones will come with little diamonds or jewels that are bigger or smaller than the common set ones. There are also two types of canvas that are most commonly used. You have your partial canvas as well as your full canvas. This one is a partial canvas. As you can see, only this part of the painting is diamond. The rest of it is a printed on material. Where these two are both full canvas ones because the entire canvas is the diamond painting not just only a portion of it. Now, I typically prefer the ones that are complete diamonds, so the full canvas ones, but I did start out doing only partial canvas ones just until I got the hang of it. Now, diamond painting kits can be purchased online from many different retailers. You can buy them online or at some craft stores, I typically order mine offline from places like Amazon or AliExpress. Diamond paintings can range from a few dollars to 50 plus dollars, depending on how big that you want the piece to be. Now yes, saving money is wonderful, and it may be tempting to buy a cheaper kit, but remember that you get what you pay for. A perfect example of this is this diamond painting. Now this is a specific brand of diamond painting called Diamond Dots, but this was one that I bought in store for about $30 from Michaels. Now as you can see it's very nice, it's very detailed, you can see the different frills on the different feathers. It has a better quality to where this diamond painting didn't hold up as well being a smaller canvas. Now, I'm not saying smaller canvases are bad. I'm just saying that you get what you pay for. Now, I've ordered this one off of AliExpress, and it was only a few dollars. But I also ordered this one off of AliExpress, and it is much more detailed, but it is bigger. Again, the bigger canvases seem to be of a better quality, and you do get more detail with them. So my advice is to save up a little bit more money and get a bigger canvas, even if it's your first one, than getting a small one and it not turning out how you expected it to turn out. All right, now let's continue on to part two and how to do your diamond painting. 
So now that you know a little bit more about diamond painting and how it came to be, now we're going to learn a little bit more about what comes in the diamond painting kits and how they will arrive at your home. Now, the kits that you buy online and the kits that you buy in store are two different things. The ones that you buy online are usually going to come in some kind of wrapping like this. Everything will come in one bundle together and you'll have things like the diamonds and different things inside. We'll get into that in a little bit. But it's important to remember that everything should be in this kit together. Whenever you get a diamond painting, always make sure that you have everything that you need. Now, what will come in that package is your canvas. Now, some important things to note on this canvas is that it comes with a plastic covering over it that covers up the sticky part of the canvas so that way nothing sticks to it in the mail and nothing gets onto it. And it just folds just like this over it. Some diamond paintings will come with a white covering over it. These ones just happen to come with a clear covering. Both are the same. All they do is to protect your canvas while you're working on it, transporting it, and things like that. Now one thing you will notice about all diamond paintings is that they come with a key on this side. Now you'll notice some different numbers on here as well as some symbols. The first one is just the number that's going to show up on the bag. Then it's going to show you the symbols that are going to be actually on the diamond painting itself as well as the DMC number. If you do a lot of diamond paintings, you might want to hold on to some of your diamonds in case you run out or in case you find drills that are not as good as in other kits. You can usually swap them between the kits as long as they are the same style. Now, the next thing that will come in every diamond painting kit is obviously the drills. Each drill set will come in little bags. This one came in little... Um, cellophane kind of wrapping that you'll have to cut open to get out the diamonds. Other ones will come in small Ziploc bags, um, but each individual color will have its own set. And like on here, you'll notice the number that is at the very end, the number 28, will be the number 28 on your key. It's very important to not go rushing through and to make sure that you have every single one of your bags. I cannot stress this enough. I've received many diamond paintings that don't have the right drills and it makes doing the painting a lot harder, especially if it's your first diamond painting and you haven't made sure that you have all the drills. The next thing that every kit should come with is this little kit. Now, in this little kit, you'll get your pen. Now, the tip of this pen has a stopper in it. Now, this pen just collects the wax so that way you can put it onto the diamond painting itself. Then you have a tray that you'll put the diamonds in as you do the diamond painting, as well as wax. Now, the important thing to remember about the wax itself is that each wax will come with a covering over it Again, just to make sure that it doesn't stick to anything. So once you peel off the little wrapper, it is ready to use and ready to load your pen with, which I will show you how to do in a moment. But first, I want to point out something to you guys about these kinds of kits. You can get kits that have different kinds of pens. These are the ones that I use that are just a different coloring tube. They're exactly the same other than that. But... Some of them will come with spacers, like these guys. These are called multi-spacers. So you'll notice that the tip of this is a little bit larger than this one. What this does is it picks up multiple diamonds at once off the tray. So this one will probably pick up about three diamonds each. This one will pick about five or six up. And then you have usually about an eight or a nine spacer, depending on how many you can fit in the little tray. I personally do not use these ones. Um, they're a little bit too big, though I do occasionally use the three spacer. These come 
very, very useful when you have spots like this where there are multiple of the same color right next to each other. You can just pick up all three of them or however many together and put them on at once instead of having to go back and forth between them. Also, some kits will come with trays that have a little funnel on them. I like these trays a lot more than the little green one like this that doesn't have the little spout, but everybody will do things differently. Now, one other thing that most kits will come with is somewhere to put your drills. Now, some kits will come with little baggies. Other kits will come with just the uh, wrappers that the drills come in themselves. Each kit is different in that aspect. I personally like to use little jars. I got these guys from Dollar Tree. Um, I believe they were four or five of them for a dollar. And then I also have bigger jars for ones that I have more drills of. These ones are five milliliters. These ones are 10 milliliters. And then I have a couple diamond pans at home where I have to use these ones, which are even larger. Now, whether you use Ziploc baggies, little um, jewelry bags, or you use something like this to hold your diamonds, the most important thing is to remember to keep your colors separate. You want to have one container for every single color that you are going to be using. Now, how do you keep these in order? Well, since I use the little jars, you'll notice that these have flat tops on them. I bought a pack of these at Walmart. They are multi-use, removable, three-fourths diameter labels. And all I do is take one of these out and I put it on the top of each lid. So let me go ahead out and grab one and I will show you guys how I make the labels. So what I will do is I will take one of these guys. You can see I've already used some of these from another diamond painting. And look on here and see what number one of the diamonds are. So we'll start from the top. This one is number one. So what we'll do is we'll just go over here and I'm going to use a Sharpie and put the number one. Now, the thing I like most about using the little jars is that I can reuse them from diamond painting to diamond painting. Because these labels are removable, they don't leave a mark on the jars. When I first started doing diamond paintings, I didn't do that. You can see this has a Y on it because this was a jar that I used from a previous diamond painting. And it just leaves a mark and it doesn't look as nice to where these guys help me out and make sure that I can reuse these jars over and over again every single diamond painting. The next thing that you're going to do is go through your diamonds and you're going to find which bag says number one. Then you're going to take your pair of scissors and cut it off of the ring and then go ahead and open it up. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use the tray just because I don't want to get the diamonds everywhere. Um, some of the diamond paintings will have smaller packets that will allow you to pour just directly into your container. This one's just a little too wide for me to do that. Now, one thing you'll notice about the trays is that they have little grooves in them. That is so when you're going to work on your diamond painting, you can just go ahead and shake them. And they will end up in the grooves to where you can pick them up easily with your pen. Now, you will also notice that these drills are round. There are also square drill diamond paintings that you can do, and they are the same exact thing, just one has round drills and the other one has square. So now I'm going to go ahead and open this up, and I'm going to carefully pour it into my jar. Now you'll note that there's not very many purple ones in this set for this diamond painting. Some of the colors will have more diamonds than others. It just depends on how big your diamond painting is. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a couple more taps. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and use my pen just kind of to scoot some of these guys along. Um, when your tray's new, it will be a little hard to get them to slide up and down the tray. Go ahead and put that one in there. Just because it hasn't worn down yet, there's still that shiny coat all over it. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and close that up tightly so that way it doesn't, and none of them escape. So now you'll notice that you have plenty of room in here. Um, this lets you know that the purple or the number one slot is not going to have very many colors on your diamond painting. Just by looking at it, I can tell you up here is where the purple is going to be. So it doesn't look like that many. Now, you will always have more diamonds than you need. One thing a lot of diamond painting companies are really good about is giving you way more than you need and you will almost always have extra. That is because sometimes you'll get deformed diamonds or diamonds that just don't quite look right or that are stuck together. Those diamonds you don't have to worry about using and you can just throw them away. And that way you have extras to make sure that you can finish your project. Again, I always keep my extras just in case I need them. You might never need them, but it's always nice to have them available. Now, I know some people who do diamond paintings that will actually mark down what the DMC number is, and they will keep them color by color by color. Because, again, that DMC number is interchangeable between most diamond painting companies. Now, I can't say all, but most. And I have noticed that myself in just the diamond paintings that I have done. Now, what you'll do is you'll continue going through and making every jar or every bag for the rest of your diamonds. And then we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so I went ahead and scooted you guys in a little bit so you can kind of see more closely what I'm working on. And that way you guys can kind of get a better idea of things. Now, the first thing you'll do is select where you're going to be working on. I'm just going to start with this little corner up here just to give you guys a sample of what you're going to be doing with the diamond painting. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is take your pen and your wax. And you're going to go ahead and you're going to get some wax built up in there just like that. It's going to take a couple times getting through there and making sure that you get all the way down. But then you'll notice that it creates a little barrier inside your pen tip. Now you're going to go ahead and push that down in there until you notice you have a little bit in there. All right. And then you're going to go ahead and make sure that you have the colors that you're going to be needing for this. So the first color that you're going to need is K. It's right up here in this corner, right in there. So what you'll do is you'll grab your K diamonds and you'll go ahead and put some in your tray. I'm just going to put a little bit in there since I only need a few. Make sure that you close up your lids or zip your bags up. And you're going to go ahead and shake them a little bit. What you'll notice is that when you're shaking it, some of the diamonds, like this one, will go to the bottom of it. Other ones will stay facing upward. You want to get the ones that are facing upward and you'll note that they stick to your pen. That's what that wax is for. And you'll note how easy it is to let them go. So what you're gonna go ahead and do is come over here and you're gonna peel back that film. So that way what you have left is that sticky canvas board. So then you're going to go over here, you're going to pick up one of your diamonds, and you're going to place it on the canvas directly in that spot. Let me go ahead and show you guys a little more up close of what it looks like. So you'll know I went ahead and I put that diamond right over the K. Now I'm going to continue doing this for the rest of the Ks in the area that I'm working on. I'm going to go ahead and pull that out just a little bit more, and I'll work on about that much area right now. Okay. 
And you'll see how quickly and simply that area filled up. So then, once I have no more Ks that I need for that area, I'm going to go ahead and put them away. Make sure that you cover that while you're not working on it. And you're going to go ahead and put the diamonds back into their container so you can reuse the tray. Now, you're going to continue doing that for all of the other colors in that area. Now, one thing I will say is, once you get used to doing your diamond painting, You'll find different ways that work for you. For me, I'll cut out some of the clear plastic with a pair of scissors or an X-Acto knife. And that way I have a clean area that I'm going to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Just to show you guys how I do my diamond paintings. Again, everybody does their diamond paintings differently. And that's okay. So, what I went ahead and did is I cut away some of that plastic covering, so that way it left me with a nice little spot of the canvas exposed. That way I know exactly what I'm going to be working on that day. So, then I continue on to the next color, which I'm going to go ahead and do the sevens, since there's only two of them in my little area. All right, so I went ahead and I did not only the seven, but I also did the J really quickly since there's only two sevens and one J in that area. Now, you'll notice that the main color that I have over here is the six. Now, I can either do it with a, my single spacer or I can get a multi-spacer if I have one. Again, you're just gonna continuously do the same thing over and over again, matching the number on the top of your diamond with the spacing on the canvas itself. All right, so what you will notice is that I ended up having to get in a couple purple ones just because the spot that I cut, which is fine. All I had to do was grab the container that had the number one on it and fill those in. Now, you're going to continue this process throughout the whole rest of the diamond painting. Now. The important thing to do once you've gotten a spot done is go through and push down the diamonds and make sure that they are secured in the diamond painting. You can either use your finger like I'm doing or you can use something like a book or a rolling pin depending on how much you want to press them down. So wait, go ahead and continue doing this for the rest of the diamond painting. And we'll come back when the diamond painting is completely finished and I'll show you how to cover it to make sure that none of your diamonds fall off. And finally, let's start part three of your diamond painting and finish it off. All right, so before we get started exactly working on how to finish your diamond painting, I do want to point out one thing. Since you guys can see that this is completely done, I'm going to go ahead and slide that up real quick so I can show you guys. These are all the diamonds that I used for this painting. Now, you can notice I have plenty of every color left. So, again, pointing out that it doesn't matter how many diamonds that you need for the actual painting. Most diamond painting companies will give you plenty of extras. That way, in case you do find the messed up drills, that you have plenty of them to use and you can keep these for other diamond paintings. All right, so now let's get started on how to finish off your diamond painting. There are a few things that you will need in order to finish off your diamond painting. First thing that I'm gonna be using is a reusable water bottle. This one has seen better days, but it works perfectly for this, as well as a container of Mod Podge and a print brush that you don't care about. This one I got from the Dollar Tree. So the first thing that you're going to be doing is you're going to take your water bottle, your book, whatever hard object that you have that will help you push down your diamonds. Now you wanna make sure that you are doing this on a hard surface because you wanna make sure that you are getting all the diamonds pressed into the board. This will also help in case you have any diamonds that are sticking up or are not completely stuck to your canvas board. 
you can go ahead and press them down. Now one thing I like to do is I like to turn my diamond painting and I like to push down from different angles. Again, just making sure that everything is pushed down and you can hear some of the little cracking. That is actually the water bottle pressing down on the diamonds. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to take your Mod Podge. I use the matte one. Um, you can use the gloss one. It doesn't really matter. What you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and open that up. And you're going to go ahead and pour some on your canvas. Now, I like to pour straight on my canvas. You can pour into a container. It does not matter either way. And what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to start from one corner. And you're going to go ahead and paint that on. Now, one thing you want to make sure that you do is you get it over that edge. Any place where there is adhesive, you want to make sure that you are putting glue on that. That is just, again, to keep everything in its place, to keep everything secured and everything, especially on that edge, and making sure that you're getting it on that edge so nothing falls off. Now, instead of using Mod Podge, one thing that you can also use is a spray adhesive. Um, I don't like using the spray adhesive just because of the smell. Um, and I have allergies, so I like using the Mod Podge because it's a little less of a scent. But you can use the spray adhesive. Just make sure that you are in a well-ventilated area if that's what you choose to use. Because you don't want that smell lingering in your house. All right, and once you get that all covered in Mod Podge, you want to go ahead and make sure that you lay it out on a flat surface till it is completely dry. You want to make sure that it is completely dry before you start moving it around, just so all the glue gets to dry between the beads and you don't have any popping off as it dries. What you're hoping is that it will create a completely flat surface, so again, none of those drills come off. So, now it is time for the surprise announcement. So, while I was online looking for diamond paintings for this program, I happened across a set of diamond paintings that included the one that I used in this video. Now, that set came with five other diamond paintings that are all along the similar moon-type, sunset-y type look to them. Well, what am I going to do with them? Hmm, I'm thinking of giving them away. So, on October 7th, when this video goes live, the first five people to come to the Lowell Public Library with a valid library card will get one of the diamond paintings that are left over. Now, it is going to be completely random which one you get. So, the first person who shows up might get this one. Or they might get this one. It just depends on whoever grabs first. Now, if you don't feel comfortable coming into the library still, completely understandable. What you can do is go to our curbside area, call into the library. They will go ahead and verify that your library card is in good standing. And they will bring a diamond painting out to you. Now, each one of these kits comes with the pen, the tray, the wax, the diamonds, and the canvas itself. And again, they are, about, they are the same size as the one that I did in this video. Some have more diamond options, some have smaller diamond options. It just depends on the diamond painting that you get. So again, if you would like to get one of these diamond paintings, all you have to do is either come into the library and ask the circulation desk, or call into our curbside and they will bring one out to you. Again, all you need to do is to get one of these is to have a valid Lowell Public Library library card to get one. And again, there are only five of them available, so once those five are gone, they're gone. So, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I know it was a little bit long, but I hope you guys learned something new and how to do diamond paintings and you will show us online what you guys are doing if you happen to win one of our diamond painting kits that we have available or you just decide to do one on your own please share a picture of it to our Lowell Public Library Facebook and show everybody what you're creating I can't wait to see them 
Stay safe and have a great day.